Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Flea Market Finds, and this is going to feature some items that I picked at the outdoor flea market on September 26th of 2021. So, uh, I'm finding a guy who had some machinist tools, and uh, one of the things I got from him was this uh, made in China angle block set. So it's a cheapy import, but uh, they're in good shape, and I got it for uh, 10 bucks. From the same guy, he had this meter in a bag. And uh, it's an older Fluke 77, which I have one of these now. I still occasionally use. And, you know, um, figured I'd take a chance on it. Might just need a battery or it might be junk. I don't know. And these are genuine Fluke leads, and they actually don't look that bad. Um, so I got this meter as is with the leaves for three bucks. Another vendor had uh, just these two machinist items. This is a, a Verdict Junior indicator made in England. This is one of these very simple little indicators. And it works perfectly fine. And it's on uh, a little mount with a couple of clamps. And that's exactly how I'll just end up selling it, just like that. It's interesting, this rod right here, actually, I saw something printed on it. And it looked, it's actually a piece of drill drill stock. And then he had this uh, 827A stair edge finder. And it is actually an 827A. And I actually have a couple extra little plastic um, pouches for these, so I can add that to it. 15 bucks for these two items and I came across a dealer who had this microphone it looked interesting to me looked very much like the kind of microphone that you know a pilot would use got a hook here to hang it this appears to be a push to talk button it's marked SW109 it's got this S and a logo here which is actually a Shure logo the Shure microphone company been around for a long time it's got an old war surplus look to it on the back here it says microphone ti-17 an interesting shape to the uh, quarter inch plug on it so um, I got this and this little piece of pottery which I don't know I just thought it was a neat little piece of art pottery and it's marked Germany with a number three on the bottoms. I have no idea who makes it. I just thought it was kind of neat looking So I got these two pieces for three bucks uh, Then the same dealer that I got the, uh, the deal on the angle block set for ten bucks um, Kind of I think I might over might have overpaid a little bit for this um, I got these three items right here for 55 and then he threw in he had a uh, cheap import vernier inside this case and it wasn't even the right size it was shorter so i took that vernier out and i said to him i'd be interested in the case and then when we were cutting getting down the brass tacks on these items he said he'd throw this in if i you know took his offer so i i paid 55 for these four items actually i wanted this case because i i think i will probably at some point come into a uh either a vernier or a dial caliper, like a 12 inch that would fit in here nicely. Uh, so what did I get from him? I got I got this uh, Sterrett uh, vernier. Nothing too fancy about it, but it is a Sterrett, no case. And then this micrometer, this is a 436 MRL-1-2. Uh, I can't quite make it out, but what this is, is this is actually a, what appears to be a brand new micrometer, uh, new old stock, so to speak. It's actually, the thimble and everything is in really good shape. Um, so I think the MRL means that this is a metric micrometer. Yeah, it is. This is a 125 to 150 millimeter, which is why I actually, why I wanted it, um, I get these in regular, you know, four to five, five to six inch, whatever 
style all the time. They're not that special, but the metric one, if you're looking for a metric one, you can get a little bit more money for them used. And then the stuff in this box, which is actually what, what he's got in here is he's got kind of a mishmash. He's got two of these early Starrett, uh, what are these, number 64s, I think. Yeah, these are Starrett number 64 mechanical indicators. So one of the reasons why I grabbed these was because it had occurred to me that I think I just recently ended up acquiring a, um, a box for one of these with a couple of parts in it with no indicator in it. And I'm like, I thought that was kind of funny that I come across a guy who's got a box with two of them in it. Yeah, so here we go. This is from the Brimfield Flea Market. This was actually a freebie I got from a guy, if I recall correctly. And all it is is it's an original box for number 64. And all it was in here was some wax paper, this one part, which these aren't missing, so don't really need that. But not one, but two of these. All right, so we could put one of these in oh there's actually one already in here okay well anywho i can make two indicators with some stuff so whatever oh, and next up i came across a dealer who didn't have many machinist tools but he happened to have these craftsman branded calipers, vernures. They're marked made in Germany. They got the nice Craftsman logo on them. They're really in nice shape and I like the original leather pouch and I actually got these for eight bucks and I got him to throw in. Um, he let me throw in these two items here which this is just a uh, Starrett accessory for a last word indicator um, but what I was really glad to find was this little itty bitty stare at center punch. Because I got a feeling I've got one or two of these sets that are missing this little size. Next up, uh, I came across this Minotorio indicator. It's funny, the box is an SPI, but it's actually a Minotorio indicator, and it is in rough shape. So, we've got a, uh, Busted crystal, and as if that wasn't bad enough, it's filthy, and it's got corrosion, and the corrosion has gotten so bad that the paint is just flaking off of it. So why did I even bother with this? Well, because it actually still works. It's a little slow on the return, which I'm not surprised, but I could put a new crystal in this, clean this all up, just remove all of that paint on the back as if it was never there and uh, have a pretty nice indicator and uh, I got this for 10 bucks so I figured why the heck not it's these long travel ones like this that tend to get a little bit more money for them and then another dealer had these two Starrett items and uh, we went back and forth on price on these and uh, I got him to agree to take 70 for the pair top one here is a uh, stare at depth mic and we've got uh, six rods so this is a zero to six it's actually in pretty nice shape and this is a stare at 445 we've got the wrench in there I meant to, so I meant to eat each one of these for only 35 a piece and the other item is a stare at inside micrometer set we've got some surface rust some light rust on the rods. And we've got this inside micrometer set. Uh, it's actually got some light rust on some of the rods, but the micrometer itself, nice and smooth, seems to be working perfectly fine. And it's got the micrometer, it's even got the wrench in it, and it's a full set for two to 12 inch. And it even has the little, uh, little extra bushing here that you can put in there to uh, add a uh, half inch 500 thousandths increment. So that's a pretty nice set. 
All right, so I got one more item to show you, and then we're going to close this one out. Oh, my mistake. I had three items left. So anyways, uh, I got these two microphones, which I, you know, <laughs> I've got probably too many of these CB microphones as it is. I have more microphones than I have radios, but um, I spotted this. Uh, this was a Turner Plus 3. Back in the day, this was a great power microphone. For those of you who don't know what power mics are, it's a desk microphone that has a circuit inside that pre-amplifies the microphone and gives you more strong modulation. So, anyways, the two big companies that were competing were Aesthetic, which made the Chrome Lollipop style microphone called the D104, and their major uh, their major competitor was Turner, which made the uh, the, the Plus Three series. Uh, the Plus series was their um, their big claim to fame. I think they had um, one called Echo Master or something like that that had built an Echo, which was probably like the king of the of their line back in the day. Anyways, I got these two microphones in as is condition for five bucks for the pair, so I couldn't pass that up. This one I didn't value it much because I couldn't even find the manufacturer's name on it. There was probably a sticker right here that went missing. It's got almost a Cobra look to it. Um, but instead of this being having more plastic on it, this actually, this might even be metal, this chrome piece. And definitely the rest of it's cast metal. And then the last item is this motor, which um, normally I don't go for motors because uh, at the flea market you get no way to test them. You don't know anything about them. I bought this one for 15 bucks for two reasons. Uh, the first reason was when I saw it first th thing in the morning, it was from one of the dealers that I regularly buy from. And as the morning went on and he sold off a lot of his stuff, the motor was still sitting there and he didn't have any takers on it. So I started talking to him about it and he had explained to me that this was one that he had actually had uh, redone at a motor shop and paid good money to have that done and then never did anything with it. He ended up deciding to go a different way for whatever reason. So it's just been sitting. So unlike a lot of the stuff that he brings in, uh, he had said that this was actually something that he had had. Um, and, you know, a lot of these flea market guys, uh, they're pretty loose with the facts, but... Uh, I buy from this guy all the time, and I felt uh, confident that, that this was a good motor, that I wasn't going to have a problem with it. And, you know, it's got the right kind of mount and the right kind of shaft on it for a pulley, so it would lend itself to uh, maybe a sander or a table saw. It's dual voltage, 115 or 230 volt, uh, 34 RPM. So usually the standard's 3450. I wonder where that. I wonder where 50 RPM disappeared to. Single phase, um, and it's a one horsepower. You know, Jet Tools. That's a Taiwanese company uh, from back in the day. Uh, so, you know, who knows? I do like the build quality of this motor, though. This is a solid casting in the faceplate. It's got a nice big cooling fan in the back. Well, anyways, that's it. Oh, before I close this out, I just want to make a quick shout out to all of my regular subscribers that are viewing this video. I uh, want to thank you for being subscribers and hanging in there with me because uh, I just recently went over the 17,000 subscriber mark, which uh, not too bad for a guy who just does this as a uh, hobby. It's actually already October and I'm behind on the uh, videos, but... Uh, well, anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like button. Thanks for hanging in there.